friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Thursday, April 7th. I want to bring you up to date on the f finishing of this mandolin. And when I say finishing, I'm really talking about the finish. You know, first of all, thank you for all the nice comments on the mandolin. On, I ask about uh, what do you think about the uh, you know, the way it looks, and everyone pretty much agreed that we need to darken it a little bit more around the very edge, and I was kind of of that thought myself. Um, it may be still a little bit yellow on the uh, other areas. Not too bad on the back, maybe a little too yellow on the front, but uh, I'm gonna try to tone that down just slightly, not a lot, just slightly. Uh, I started yesterday to airbrush. You know, I, that's another thing. People get on me saying, you don't use airbrush? How come you don't use airbrush? This is step one. Airbrush is step two. And yes, I will, air, the rest of this will, for the most part, be airbrushed, other than where I may darken this slightly. But the rest of this will be airbrushed, and I always do that. Now, here's the thing. I'm planning to use oil varnish on this. And in this case, it'll be the True Oil Gunstock Varnish. Uh, True Oil is a, you know, it's a tried and true instrument finish. It works really well. I used to use a different kind of oil varnish. It's no longer available. Hydrosign, I believe was the name of it. And there were other ones too that I used. And I can't find any of them anymore. And the few that you can find are just crazy prices and stuff. And it's just, you know, and you don't know what you're getting for that kind of money either, so it's not really worth it to me. So the True Oil Gun Varnish, Gunstock Varnish, is a pretty darn good substitute. If it has a negative, it's that it uh, it's very runny when you put it on. Uh, you really have to watch when you put it on. Most oil varnishes are kind of like that, but typically the other oil varnishes go on a little bit thicker and they'll lay and kind of cling better. This varnish goes on very thin and it just runs. Boy, it runs like crazy. But it's a good acoustic finish when, it's, when it hardens up. I would use lacquer, but uh, I'm kind of mad at lacquer right now. Now, on a scale of one to 10, here's how I would give, acoustically, here's how I would give finishes the acoustics scale rating. I'd give French polish a 10. French polishes are done with shellac and alcohol basically. I'd give those a 10. Oil varnishes are just oil varnish and those I would give 9.5 to a 9.9. .9. So they're real close to the French polish in terms of acoustic sound. Lacquer finish, I'd give it an 8 to a 9, uh, maybe a 9.2 or something. You know, I mean, it's a pretty good finish. It's, it's, it goes on fairly easy when it wants to. So it's probably the easiest one to apply for the most part. But I don't, I'm not looking for easy on this. I'm looking for the best acoustic sound. So then you'd say, well, why don't you do French polish? Because every time I do a finish on an instrument, for all the years I've been on YouTube, 10 years now, every single time, at least one person, if not a half dozen, asked me, why don't you use French polish? Well, I just told you, it's got a, you know, it's a 10 in terms of acoustic sound. It, you can't beat it. Here's how I rate uh, French polish. I give it five tens, actually. <laughs> five tens. Two of those tens are on the positive side of the scale. The other three are on the negative side. <laughs> so there's why I don't use French polish, but let me explain more. By the way, you're, feel free to disagree with me. I wore this shirt on purpose because you need to understand if you disagree with me about what I'm about to tell you about French polish, you just need to know you're wrong. You just, you just need to know that up front and accept it, and then <laughs> we'll just move on. <laughs> Anyway, French polish, it's got two tins. It's beautiful. It, it, there's nothing any more beautiful than French polish. It's beautiful. Number two, it's acoustically perfect. I mean, it's as good as it gets. So why wouldn't I use it? Well, the other three put those in the toilet for me. Okay, what's the first one, the first negative 10? I mean, like we have a negative scale also that goes zero, or zero to 10. Well, 
it's a 10 on the negative. And that is, if you are a musician and a serious musician, you sweat. I mean, all serious musicians pretty much sweat. There's probably a few exceptions out there, but rare exceptions. Here's why you sweat. First of all, it's physically more demanding than you think it is. So anytime you're doing a lot of things with muscles and energy, you're going to create heat and you're going to create sweat. Secondly, it, you're thinking about so many things. There's so much to keep under control when you're a serious musician. That generates heat. Third, it's an emotional thing and, you, and that generates heat. You sweat like crazy when you're a true, solid musician. So what's the negative when it comes to French polish? It turns the French polish milky white. Sweat does. It just ruins the finish. Okay, so there's a huge negative. If you're a serious musician, I tell you don't use French polish, period. Just forget it, don't even try it. Second, the second negative is that you can scratch French polish with the soft side of a feather. I'm seriously telling you, it's the easiestly scratched finish on the planet. Again, if you're a serious musician, yeah, you're not going to have much of a finish left in a year, you know, because you know how that you just instruments get banged around. You, they're, they're pulled everywhere, thrown everywhere. <laughs> they're, you know, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And so it's not a good finish for a serious musician on those two accounts. What's the third 10 negative? It is the hardest finish to apply. I mean, it, it, it takes more elbow grease than any other finish. If, if I was being fair, I would also give it a 10 on the positive side for one more thing. And I've already mentioned how beautiful it is. It's about the most beautiful finish there is. But it would be a 10 if you were building an instrument for display. If you were building it for a museum, if you were building it to, to say, look what I built and set it on a shelf, <laughs> it'd be a 10. Okay, but that's not why we build instruments. So, like I said, feel free to disagree with me. You can if you want to, but you know, you, have, you just have to realize you're wrong. Okay, so that's why I don't do French polish at all. Period. Zero, don't do it, won't do it. You can't talk me into it. The oil varnish then is where I'm at on this one. Now, the problem with oil varnish is, I just got done telling you I want to airbrush this. Well, I don't want to airbrush it with lacquer and stain to darken it, uh, which would be a good choice. Lacquer and stain mixes really well, but that's not a good choice for this because I don't want to go over the lacquer with oil varnish. If I mix the stain into the oil varnish, that's not a good choice either. What did I tell you about the oil varnish? It runs like a duck's butt. It just runs everywhere. And you need to build it up if you're going to darken this. And if you're going to do sunbursting, you just have, you have to apply more of it in some places and less in other places. And that doesn't work with oil varnish. It runs like a duck's butt. And if you don't know what that runs like, raise some ducks and you'll understand very quickly. <laughs> okay, so what are my options then? Because how am I gonna how am I gonna darken these edges? Well, I I tried a test of just spraying just the um, just the dye itself. Eh, it's not it's not good for me. A real expert airbrush person probably could get away with that. That's not this guy here. So uh, that's not an option for me. I tried and I tried, and all I do is waste the the stain. It just it spits out too much of it too fast for me and I tried adjusting it and it just I couldn't get it adjusted. Okay so that's starting to narrow down my options. Well believe it or not <laughs> I can't believe I'm even saying this I'm gonna mix the stain with shellac which is the base of French polish which has those negatives I was telling you about. The difference is shellac is a good undercoat for oil varnish. Oil varnish will coat it over, therefore it shouldn't turn milky, it shouldn't scratch, etc, etc. All that to tell you, that's how I'm going to try to darken these edges, is to use uh, shellac with the uh, stain and uh, darken it that way. Now I attempted this yesterday with the oil varnish, as I said, and I wiped it back off because it just wasn't working. In the meantime, I broke my vial. 
that goes to my airbrush. I must be psychic because I had already ordered two more new vials. So they're on their way. They're supposed to be here tomorrow. <laughs> I must be psychic. Either that or it's that self-fulfilling prophecy that you know you got some more coming, so just break this one. <laughs> it was pretty old anyway. It's probably, golly, probably 15, 20 years old. Maybe older than that. Uh, anyway, so I have to wait on this. I can't do it today. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Hopefully tomorrow, well, tomorrow we'll have the shop talk. So I probably won't put out a vlog tomorrow. I may still in the afternoon at least do the oil, airbrushing on this and if time permits I'll put out another vlog either tomorrow afternoon or Saturday but I hope you'll join me on the shop talk tomorrow at 8 a.m. my time I have been requested to do a live song and uh, I actually have practiced one for a change I almost never practice I know you probably think I do but I almost never practice anything before I do it live on the show I mean like Pretty much never. <laughs> but this one I have actually practiced. I hope I do it justice. It's a nice song and I think you'll enjoy it. So tomorrow, 8 a.m., join me for the live shop talk. Be there or be square. Thank you so much. Tell your friends. We'll see you then.